will be discussing about the platter so as you can see how a platter is designed inside a platter there are various disc sectors and there are various tracks as you can see here in the red line uh, this entire red line is representing uh, this entire red line is representing a complete track okay and these tracks are actually concentric circles where we store the data and every track is divided into sectors so this triangle is actually representing a sector and the read write head is reading data from the tracks so you can see this magnetic disk is a thin circular metal plate which is uh, which usually uh, record on either the side so you can record on the upper side as well as on the lower side and the data on the disk is organized as a set on concentric circles called as tracks so you can see the data on the disk is organized as as a set on concentric circles concentric circles called as tracks called as tracks and each track hold same number of manageable units called as sectors so you can clearly see in the diagram every track is having equal number of sectors okay you can say each track holds same number of manageable units which are called as sectors which are called as sectors and the universal size of a sector is 512 bytes this is what we follow the universal size of a sector is 512 bytes and the disk space without format overhead is called as is formatted disk space and the basic unit of transfer is a sector the basic unit of transfer is a sector that means whenever cpu is going to request some data then it is going to transfer the entire sector through this read write head and so there are basic terminologies which we use the terminologies are as follows number 1 is the recording density the recording density which we generally show as e which is called number of bytes per centimeter okay and see this number of bytes per centimeter on the very high end disk this recording density is very very high because as high as the recording density then th that will make the disk more expensive or if, and here you can see this uh, if you can say that sir in the outer sectors or in the outer tracks uh in on the outer track because the track is very wide so therefore the outer track must be containing more number of bytes and the inner track must be containing less number of bytes but to this you can say there are the maximum recording densities at the innermost track that is why all even if the outer track or the inner track both are containing same number of bytes per centimeter so you can say the maximum density the maximum recording density recording density is at innermost track is at innermost track and the data transfer rate mm -hmm. let the data transfer rate data transfer rate we will be denoting it by capital b d which is equal to number of bytes we transfer per second and this data transfer rate is dependent on the rotations per minute it depends on depends on rotations per minute and generally the hard disk rotates at uh, the speed of 5400 rpm some hard disk even rotate rotate at the speed of 7200 rpms there are some hybrid hard disks which are also available and those hybrid hard disks 
they rotate somewhere around 15,000 RPM. So if the, the RPM or the, the speed of the hard drive is bigger, then obviously the data transfer rate will be higher or you can say the data transfer rate will be faster. So that is why sometimes we prefer the hard drives which are having higher data transfer rates. Now for this one, we'll be having some kind of times which we'll be using. And the, the first time that we'll be using is the seek time seek time and what is the seek time the time required for the read write head to come to the desired track that is called as a seek time okay write down in your notebooks the time required the time required for the read write head to come to the desired track come to the desired track is called as seek time okay and this seek time will be denoting the seek time with the term which is ts there is time taken for seek time okay or uh, there is one more way you can define the seek time the amount of time taken to move the read write head from its current position to the desired track that is called as the seek time and the next time that we need to understand is the rotational latency rotational latency okay so rotational latency is if you are the amount of time taken to rotate the track when the retired head come to the exact position is called as a rotational latency that means see this is a retired head so first of all you have to bring the retired head to the desired track where you want to read so time taken to take the retired head from this location and to move the retired head from this location to take to the desired track that is called as a seek time now that means after reaching to the desired track now we have to rotate the hard disk or we have to rotate this disk so that we can read the data and to rotate the disk initially because it is going to accelerate so we are going to have some rotation latency which will be an overhead so the rotation latency is the amount of time amount of time taken to rotate the track when the read write head when the read write head came to the exact position to the exact position or you can say to the exact sector that is called as the rotation latency or the rotation time now this rotation time or uh, this rotation latency is generally one uh, one by half the rotation time so uh, that is generally in general rotational latency is will be representing by tr will be equal to half of the rotation time half of the rotation time that means the time required or the time taken to rotate the entire disk by one cycle that is called as the rotation time so this rotation latency will be half of the rotation time and this rotational latency is also called as disk latency this is also called as disk latency disk latency okay so you can see now this entire is going to make it as an excess time so when we discuss what, what is an excess time so excess time can be written as the seek time plus the rotation latency that is tr so excess time is ts plus tr now to this excess time uh, if you want to access the data then you have to transfer the data and to transfer the data will be having some transfer time and then we'll be having some kind of overhead to uh, set up the controller so the total time you can say the average access time of a disk can be represented by the average access time of a disk can be represented by t average that will be equal to ts that is trans uh, time taken to seek number one tr the rotation latency plus data transfer the time taken to transfer the data plus some t overhead and this t overhead means the delay for setup with the controller delay 
for setup with controller with controller so this is the entire transfer time okay so here in this entire transfer time now we can take some examples to represent this transfer time right so we'll be taking those examples in the next coming videos okay